back to episode four, five, six, I don't know. But welcome back, welcome, welcome to the new episode. So this batch I've been photographing, um, I'm not feeling super excited about. You've, you've joined me at a little kind of, it's not a wobble, it's definitely not a wobble. I've not seen any of the images, so I've got the pictures in my head, but I don't know for sure how they look. And I found myself shooting more still lives for this uh, particular series. So we'll see. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the ones that I think might work um, before we see them. And there might be some surprises in there, which is, that's the, that's the amazing thing about photograph and film. It's when you get these negs or these scans and there's something there that is maybe a little bit unexpected or something that you thought might not work, but does work. So that's what I plan to do. I'm going to talk about these and then I'll send them off to get processed. So the first image of this batch was Lauren. So Lauren is a post person, I suppose you would say. I used to be a postman years and years ago and it was actually being a postman that got me into photography because I used to deliver postcards, there was pictures on the postcards of the Beatles. And when I say there was pictures of the Beatles, I was not a postman in the 60s, but it was these postcards of musicians, Jimi Hendrix, that I would notice. And it got me thinking about photography and the realization that someone else was there experiencing these moments with all these musicians was incredible. No one sees the photographer, but they're part of that. And so when I saw Lauren, I thought, I'd love to photograph Lauren. She said no. She was a bit shy, not quite up for it, but we chatted and I showed Lauren some of my work and I said, well, next time you see me, if you change your mind, then maybe we could do a photograph. And then I was walking down the street and I thought to myself, I'm just going to ask again, because I think Lauren would be good. And in some ways, you know, when you're trying to represent a community, um, it's the people who work within that community. And Lauren will know that community well. So I went back and asked again, and this time Lauren said yes. So I've got the photograph of Lauren with the post bag, and she looked great. I'm hoping that'll be a good shot. John Cannon with Snowy, the Doug. I had gone a couple of roles and I'm thinking I'm not getting any good portraits and I'm, I'm wasting film. Asking people and whatever it is, it's just not quite what I envisaged or I've not brought something to it that makes that connection. And so I think I had a, maybe three or four frames left on this role and I turned a corner and I saw this chap, big guy, with this tiny little white dog called Snowy, named from the Tintin books. And I asked John, well, I didn't know his name at the time, but I said, excuse me, uh, I'd love to photograph you and your dog. Is that okay? He said, yeah, it's fine. He said, as long as I don't have to pay for it. I said, no, no, you don't have to pay for it. So where I photographed him was where I photographed already on this project, but he's there. And then you kind of sense, you get an idea how much time people have or how much time you want to spend. So I had to do it quite quickly. Plus I was photographing on a busy road, uh, cars going by, I could have died. So it was, was this photograph worth dying for? I think it's a good photograph, so maybe, but maybe not worth dying for. So photograph John, so that I'm looking forward to seeing that because he, he just looked cool. And I said to him, I, I said, have you got an email address? I can send you the photographs. Oh, don't worry about that, it's fine, it's all fine. I just loved, loved his demeanor, loved his personality. So we'll see how that one looks. Jim, I've met Jim a couple of times and he's always heading to work. And this particular day, I says he got a little bit more time than he did. And I think Jim looks brilliant. Jim's got a few tattoos. I, the first time I saw him, I noticed there was a, just a couple of tattoos just on his eyes, really small. But I look at people closely when I'm walking down the street and introduce myself to Jim and he didn't have time that day. Um, but since then, since that introduction, I've met him many times. And so I knew one day I was going to get to photograph him. So I'm looking forward to seeing that shot of Jim because he's quite striking. And when I photographed him, he had tattoos and, and there's a tattoo in the middle that says lucky boy. And I really liked that. And I asked Jim, what, why are you, why that tattoo? I said, well, just people used to call me that. Th things seem to work out for me. I just like that positivity as well. So looking forward to that one. So the next portrait that's in my mind um, is of Elisa. And it's, it's just quite a nice little story. So I was packing up. This often happens that just someone comes around the corner. So your paths cross. And this young girl, Elisa, came around the corner with a cat around her neck. A 
cat around her neck and I'm thinking, wow, that's amazing. I'm looking at Elisa and I think she looks cool with this cat, but I'm thinking, well, Elisa's maybe, I don't know, 10, 11? I think maybe 11 or 12. And so right away there's an issue. How do I photograph this person who's under 16? I definitely want parental consent. I want to ask the parents. So I asked Elisa um, if her parents were nearby and it turns out she was going shopping with the cat around the shoulder, going to get the messages with the cat around the shoulder. Uh, so Elisa let me know where her parents stayed and so I went round and asked, I contacted the, her mum and asked the question and it turns out she said to me, yeah, you photographed Elisa and her sister before. I'm thinking, wait a minute, yeah, I have, I have. So about three years previously, a similar circumstance, two little girls got out a taxi and the, the man who was driving the taxi was their father. And they were in party dresses and they had these big presents. And I thought, wow, they look amazing. I'd love to photograph them. So I asked um, Elisa's father, got permission and photographed them. And so this was Elisa's mum. And I had previously photographed Elisa and her sister three years before. And of course, in three years time, when you're young, you change very quickly. And so everything was brilliant, everything was fine. And I was able to photograph Elisa with her cat around her neck. So that's an image where it was, I didn't have an awful lot of time because the cat was grumpy. And the cat was starting to think, to say, I don't want to be used as a scarf anymore. The cat changed its mind. So I had to do it very quick. So I'm really hoping that that will be a good shot. I think if I can get the cat's face, cat was turning around, maybe, maybe it'll be good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I've got there.